Good morning, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, and welcome to the Eucharistic celebration of the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. In today's liturgy, our risen Christ promised us a glorious future, where we will be filled with the vision of God's glory. As we bring ourselves into the presence of our Lord, let us ask for the grace to hold steadfast to this hope and for the strength to be missionary disciples of him who is God of the living. For to him, all men are in fact alive. With joyful hope, let us rejoice, giving thanks and praise with the entrance hymn. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry for help, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Greetings and welcome, dear friends, brothers and sisters. Today we are being reminded with all the challenges that we go through in life, with all the struggles and anxieties, with all the kind of fears that we have, there is still great hope in the person of Jesus. So let's anchor ourselves on Jesus, the way, the truth, and life. And for the times we fail to live our lives in hope, let us turn to him, to Jesus, and seek forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I fail to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Mercy. Lord, 
Glory to God in the highest. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. In those days, it happened that seven brothers and their mother were arrested and were being compelled by the king under torture with whips and cords to partake of unlawful swine's flesh. One of them, acting as their spokesman, said, What do you intend to ask and learn from us? For we are ready to die, rather than transgress the laws of our fathers. And when he was at his last breath, he said, You accursed wretch, you dismiss us from this present life. But the king of the universe will raise us up to an everlasting renewal of life because we have died for his laws. After him, the third was the victim of their spot. When it was demanded, he quickly put up his tongue and courageously stretched forth his hands and said nobly, 
I got this from heaven, and because of his laws, I disdain them, and from him, I hope to get them back again. As a result, the king himself and those with him were astonished at the young man's spirit, for he regarded his sufferings as nothing. When he too had died, they maltreated and tortured the folk in the same way. And when he was near death, he said, one cannot but choose to die at the hands of men and to cherish the hope that God gives of being raised again by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, 
May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honoured as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is the firstborn from the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who say that there is no resurrection, approach Jesus and they put this question to him. Master, we have it from Moses in writing that if a man's married brother dies childless, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Well then, there were seven brothers. The first, having married a wife, died childless. The second, and then the third, married the widow. And the same, with all seven. They died leaving no children. Finally, the woman herself died. Now at the resurrection, to which of them will she be wife, since she had been married to all seven? Jesus replied, The children of this world take wives and husbands, but those who are judged worthy of a place in the other world and in the resurrection from the dead do not marry because they can no longer die, for they are the same as the angels. And being children of the resurrection, they are sons of God. And Moses himself implies that the dead rise again in the passage about the bush where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, 
and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all men are in fact alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, it is good to be home and to share with you these readings that the Church has chosen for us. Because the Church is challenging us in selection, in the selection of these readings. It's asking us how far are we willing to go in practicing our faith? How far are we willing to go in our love for God? How deep is our hope in God? The story of the Maccabees puts for us this great challenge. The story of this mother and her seven children. They also invite us to consider what is our idea of the life of the world to come? What is our idea of marriage? Jesus here says that in the world to come, they do not marry, they are not given in marriage because they do not die in the resurrection. Marriage exists in the world today in order for human beings to continue because through marriage comes the blessing of children and through children, the human race continues. And look at how the simple teaching that is common sense has been upside down, has been turned upside down in the world today. And so many things are challenging our faith today. And the question of the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection was also a challenge to Jesus himself about what is this that we have our hope in? Our belief that we are going to profess in the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come, is most strongly expressed in the lives of the martyrs throughout the ages. The martyrs not only of the Maccabean times, the martyrs of the Roman persecutions, of so many people, so many Christians, who joyfully, singing psalms, walk to their death and amaze the people who were persecuting them. Like the faith of the Maccabees amazed their tormentors. Why are these people joyfully going to death? Look at the faith of the martyrs of Korea, including our own St. Shastan. Look at the faith of the martyrs of Vietnam, including the martyrs of our own college. And until today, the martyrs killed by ISIS, the martyrs that are dying this very day in Nigeria, for their faith in God, for their love of God, and for the hope of the resurrection. They die out of love for God. And think about this. The martyrs of the Maccabees, they were being ripped apart limb from limb. And during the time of Elizabeth I in England, their punishment of death was by hanging, drawing and quartering. They hang you until you are half dead, bring you down, and then 
you are drawn with your insides taken out and four horses pull you apart. That's the punishment. And so many martyrs, they go willingly knowing, especially the priests, going back to England to minister to the people there, knowing that it meant certain death. And this kind of death, this kind of death, what is it that moves them to do this? And it was so easy to survive. Just deny your faith. Just say there is no God. And so there is no promise of God. No resurrection. No life of the world to come. Only this life. And you are free to go on your merry way. But the hero of the story of the Maccabees even though her story is not told in the reading of today, is the mother. After they went through her children one by one, they arrived at the youngest boy. And the king is trying with all his might to persuade the boy to deny his faith. And finally, he said, call the mother, mother, Tell your son to deny his faith. You don't want him to die. You don't want him to suffer. You tell him. He will listen to you. And the mother called the boy. And the mother said to the boy in their own language so that the king didn't understand. Boy, I don't know where you came from. God gave me to you. But hold fast to your faith. Because the God that gave you to me will give you again. And that's what the brother said. Give me your arm so I can cut it off. Sure, take it. Because the God that gave me this limb will give it to me again in the resurrection of the just. And this was the faith. This was the faith of the mother that would see her child being ripped apart after seeing her six other children die horribly. And we look at ourselves and we understand why it's a challenge to us. Those of us who are parents, those of us who have people under our care, those of us who have people look to us as examples, what kind of a faith do we have? Is it this strong in the hope of the resurrection? Is it this strong that the life of the world to come in happiness with God forever and ever, that is the goal of our life? That we can say to our children, yes, die for God. In the world today, it's not like this. And many of us have forgotten this, this centrality of God in our life because we have lost hope. The thing that moved the mother, besides the love she had for God, was the hope in the promise of God. That she will awake again as we send in the psalm and see the light of the face of God. Nowadays, I come from the Philippines. And in the Philippines, I used to teach children at two schools. And it was so difficult to get the children to participate in the activities of the church. In the academic activities, these fellows will come and they will do all sorts of things, all sorts of things for the academics, all sorts of things even for the extracurricular activities in the school. You try to get them to do church things. It's very hard. And sometimes when I speak to the children, they tell me it's the parents. The parents are the problem. The parents are saying, no, forget about it, man. 
you have this tuition and that tuition and you have this class and that class you don't have any more time to take part in all these youth activities in the church serving in the church forget about it because those things that will help you in your career are more important and later on what happens they grow up believing what the parents have said your children believe you your children will believe in your example your children will believe in the signals that you are sending them about what is important in life and if you put the studies first and the career first and being materially fulfilled first they will take you at your word and later on when you are abandoned honor your father and mother doesn't exist in this world huh? in that world of materialism doesn't exist when they do criminal activities and you come crying to the priest my son my daughter is like that what did you tell them when they were growing up they took you at your word we have to be very careful brothers and sisters about where we put our hope and the hope of the mother and the hope of the mother was clear in this story and the hope of the brothers was very clear in this story and friends today we have even more reason to hope they hoped and trusted in the word of god but we have jesus who not only told us that there will be a resurrection that i will raise you up on the last day but he rose again from the dead the first fruits of many others he gives us the proof and in his resurrection our hope is based and we have reasons for having a stronger faith in the resurrection and the promise of god why do we need this hope because suffering is a part of our life we have to suffer but for what do we suffer many people go to the gym and they suffer a lot they are sweating they are running in place carrying weights up and down doing all this and that that is suffering man and they suffer because they have a goal fellows are dieting left and right and they are eating some sort of grass and that's suffering especially if you live in penang my gosh and why do they suffer they have a goal they want to look good so people can suffer huh? people can do difficult things people can fast for health to look good but for god where is your hope because suffering will come in your life the friends of god suffered these maccabees are the friends of god and they suffered look at the saint saint francis xavier his life dream was to go to china and to have mission there and after passing through all the trouble on an island in sight of the coast of china he died that's it the end of his mission on earth in heaven it continued because there was his hope and look at all the apostles the close friends of our lord jesus christ look at how they died they were not living life of peace and prosperity eh? money coming in because they were friends of god no we will suffer but for what will we choose to suffer what will sustain us in our suffering what will keep us living for god which is sometimes more difficult than dying for god because living for god goes on and on and we see among us the living martyrs 
which means witness. Because we see them witnessing in their lives for years, year in and year out. Their fidelity, their faithfulness. We remember our grandmothers who always lived and did the right thing, even when it was difficult. We remember their fidelity to prayer. We remember the hardships that they endured. Because of their hope in this resurrection. And the church is saying, hey, because of their love for God, their faith in God, and their hope and their endurance, the church gives us a day to commemorate them, the day of all saints. A multitude of saints in heaven who washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. They passed through the suffering and they received the reward of their hope. They possessed what they hoped for. Lastly, my friends, the reading today tells us that your actions in this life that passes away has consequences for life eternal. The actions that you do, the small things, are important. It's so important that for eternity, your actions will reverberate down. Why? Why your little action in time has an effect in eternity? Because Jesus loves you. Because God loves you. And because the actions of a loved one, no matter how small, means a lot. The small actions of somebody that you love mean so much. And this sacrifice in time that you make for God, getting up, saying your prayers, believing in Him, having faith in Him, coming here day after day, week after week. God sees it. And because He loves you, and because He wants to reward your hope in Him, your actions have meaning. Your life has meaning. You have meaning. Because it is founded in the love of God for you. I leave you with this challenge, brothers and sisters. You ask yourself, am I faithful to God and all my obligations to God that I do out of love? Am I faithful to God only when it's easy? Do I really believe in this life of the world to come that will be forever and ever in happiness, complete happiness with God, the Blessed Mother and all the saints? And that is my hope. Do I really believe in this? And lastly, because you will say that you believe in this in the creed in moments from now. Lastly, does my life reflect my belief? Because, friends, if your life does not reflect your belief, you will come to believe what you live. And if you live a life that is not in accordance with the will and the love of God and you will live a life according to your own way, your love for God, your belief in God will change. And you have seen this in your children and you have seen this in so many people who have fallen away from the love of God because they did not let their faith informed their lives and so began to believe as they live. 
We ask God for the grace to be faithful to Him, to be faithful to our hope in Him. And we ask our Blessed Mother to obtain for us this grace through the hands of Jesus, her Son. Amen. Being enlightened by the Word of God, let us all stand and once again profess in a God that gives us hope. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our needs, our petitions, the prayers of our heart, remembering persons and people who have asked us to pray for them. For the Church, that we may offer faithful witness to God's abiding care for us and always live as children of God. We pray for the strength not to stray from the path to holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. For the world, that all who do not believe in eternal life may come to know the living God who offers the fullness of life through his eternal embrace. We pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance and enlightenment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our parish community, that we discern, hear, and respond to the word of God, and that we be steadfast in seeking to do good and to love and to be loving neighbors. We pray for the grace of sacrificial love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We now lift up our personal needs and the needs of all who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear, hear us. us. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, let us continue to pray for the 19 young men and women who will be confirmed at 11.30 a.m. Mass, our very own children, that they will continue to be witnesses. They will be reflecting their faith in and outside the world. We also remember GE15. We are responsible. Our vote is not just secret. Our vote is sacred. You are responsible to choose your leaders and let's choose them wisely. For with all these intentions, we bring to Mary our mother 
and we ask her to pray for us. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands. It will become the bread of life. Are you Lord, God of all creation? Thanks to your goodness, this wine we offer, fruit of the wine, works of our hands, it will become the cup of joy. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
dear friends, brothers and sisters, a moment of grace. Let's bring all our anxieties, our fears, our challenges, our pain, our sicknesses, whatever you are going through, bring it to the altar of sacrifice. As the bread and wine is being transformed into the body and blood of Christ, may the Lord transform, give you strength, hope, love and peace. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through who him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, in the midst of all the challenges that we go through, thank God there is Jesus. Thank God there is hope. Thank God there is resurrection. But that in our mind, let us pray the beautiful words of Jesus. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep all of us for eternal life. Amen.
the communion and different. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. The first collection will now be taken. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we have a few announcements. Dear parishioners, we are pleased to inform that our church will have 19 candidates to be confirmed today during 11.30 Bahasa Mas, which will, which will be celebrated by Bishop Sebastian Francis. As you know, the church is the teacher of the way the Catholic life to be lived. As the community of faith, we invite you to pray for the candidates as they, as they prepare themselves to be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Hour, 
Let us come together and spend an hour with the Lord this coming Tuesday at November at 8 p.m. CIC will be celebrating its Christmas family gathering on 11 December with only one Mass for that Sunday, which is at 5 p.m. It will be an evening of fun, entertainment, and activities, and the highlight will be the lightning of the Christmas tree. As Christmas is a time of giving, we, up, we appeal to parishioners to give gift for the children of our parish community and to the underprivileged children as well. As it has been the practice over the years, kindly get gift for the various age groups. St. Vincent de Paul is selling calendar for their yearly fundraising at the entrance of the church. Please help them to help the poor. And for the rest of the announcement, please refer your e-bulletin. Thank you. So, dear friends, brothers and sisters, as Brother was saying that on the 11th of December is our Christmas family gathering, you know, when you bring gifts for the children, let it be not the ones that is kept at a showcase the extras, the unwanted, you know, because the previous years when we got it, some are dented, some can't be used, and we are giving to the children. I think it reflects us, of our spirituality, of our faith for these children. And some of these children are the poor ones coming from the different homes, the ones that we give to people of other faith. So when you pack, take it as something that's coming from your heart, Give a gift that touches the heart of the other because this is what it means sharing and giving. And believe me, friends, when you give, you don't become poor. You become richer in the grace of Jesus the Christ. So, dear friends, brothers and sisters, as I said, every Mass, weekend Masses, there will be seminarians serving. They are part of us. The seminary is part of the parish, and the parish is also very much linked to the seminary. So today we have two seminarians serving at this Mass. One is Majori Simon. Majori, can stand, please? Okay. And the other is Victor Mahil. <laughs> and both of them are in their first year philosophy, and they are from the KK Archdiocese the Kota Kinabalu Archdiocese. So in every Mass, we will introduce the seminarians, so you will know the seminarians that are here for studies. We are grateful and we are also thankful for the gift of our very own son, who has studied in the Philippines, a religious who is from the order of the Incarnate Word, and he's completed his studies and he has become an ordained as a deacon on the 25th of March, the Feast of the Annunciation. And today he's here with us to share the joy of being ordained as a deacon, breaking the word, preached and reflected pretty well for all of us. And we welcome our very own Brother Andrew to the parish. So dear friends, brothers and sisters, Brother Andrew will be leaving for Rome for further studies and he leaves the parish on the 12th of November. So we wish him all the best for his studies. He'll come back very well prepared and he will share and break the word for all of us. So dear friends, with that is being said, I wish you well and I wish you a happy Sunday. As I said, whatever you're going through, remember there's great hope and more than that, God truly loves you. So for all those who are visiting our parish, coming from the other parishes, from the other states, I welcome you to the Church of the Immaculate Conception, Penang, and those of you who are holidaying in Penang, wishing you a pleasant holiday, and those of you who are leaving, going back home, wishing you a safe journey. Remember, God truly is present among you. Let us stand and pray the Siddhartha Parak together. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. 
teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>